Welcome to Camera Ready and Able, the podcast that explores the intersection of media change and personal growth. I'm your host, Barbara Barna Abel, and my calling is to help you tap into your superpowers to thrive on camera and in life and to make an impact on the world. This episode is brought to you by the word gratitude, because this episode is my two-year potiversary. So I'm very grateful to all of my guests, and I'm especially grateful to you for listening. So thank you. Oxford Languages defines gratitude as the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. It actually comes from the Latin word gratis, which means pleasing or thankful. It's regarded as a feeling of appreciation by a recipient of another person's kindness. So awesome that we have clarity on the meaning of gratitude in case you needed it. But um, I've really been thinking about what do I have to say to add to the gratitude conversation that makes it podcast worthy, that you don't already know, that I'm presuming like me, you have a gratitude journal. I write mine every day and I have for years and it's helped me get through some serious slumps, challenges and dark days. But then recently I came across two things that changed the conversation in my head. And they are one, this quote, which I'm going to read, that the difference between thankfulness and gratitude is that thankfulness is an emotion, but gratitude is an attitude of appreciation under any circumstance. So that translates to gratitude is actually a state of being. Gratitude means expressing thankfulness and being appreciative of life, even when There's nothing really exciting or special to be grateful for. That means just like the everyday mundane quotidian things of life you're grateful for. And then of course, being grateful when really bad shit happens. Not grateful for the bad shit, but finding things to be grateful for in your life. And this is really powerful and important. And as I mentioned, it's helped me tremendously over the years. But what took this gratitude conversation for me to the next level was I've been doing some online study with one of my virtual mentors, Gina Mollicone Long. You don't know her. She is an amazing coach, expert. Um, She's an NLP trainer, does tremendous work around success, performance, and communication. And virtual mentor means, of course, you know, she's a goddess to me and has totally transformed my life and my business, but she doesn't know that I exist. So I'm taking this course. And one of the most amazing things about Gina is that everything she does, she backs up with science. So it's not just, you know, soft skills and ideas. There's really data behind everything. And so in this training, she said something that really got my attention. This is it. She said there's a difference between thinking about being grateful and actually physically being grateful, meaning this can be measured. I was so seriously leaning forward at this point, my head nearly hit my computer screen. It's not enough to think you're grateful. You have to be grateful. And so this starts with us actually starting to become aware of this and what this means. Are we just going through the motions of being grateful every day? Or are we actually being grateful? Because study shows that people who can get themselves into a state of gratitude have more successful outcomes. So on a simple level, you could think of an athlete competing either at the highest level or just even a, you know, a child in an ASO competition, just being grateful for the opportunity to compete, to be in that championship game, or just to show up on a Saturday. You can think of an actor or a musician grateful for the opportunity to perform, to live their art. It made me understand how there's science to the way you can actually feel love in a dish that someone has prepared for you. And Gina goddess that she is, was totally transparent and cited this time when she got hooked up to a biofeedback machine and she thought she was being grateful. She was like, as I'm sure many of us would be, I know gratitude. I keep a journal. And the machine said, nope, you are not in a state of gratitude. I have to presume it was probably humbling, but it really gave her pause and led to her going deeper into the study, which is why we're talking about it right now, because I was mind blown. Now, I don't have a biofeedback machine, but the happy news is that it's not 
really that difficult to get into a state of gratitude. It really just begins with consciousness and intention, like so many things. So we begin by making, you know, just taking some breaths and slowing down. So this is where I'm going to give you my full confession that I try every breathing technique. I'm totally into this, but I find that when I do, you know, box breathing, which is very, very popular, it just makes me lightheaded. So full disclosure, I do the most basic breathing technique that works for me all the time. It's really helped me deepen my meditation practice. It's literally silently in my head, I just repeat the words, I breathe in, I breathe out. I breathe in, I breathe out. And I begin to quickly slow down. And I've gotten to the place where, you know, I can do maybe six breaths in a minute. So that's kind of a nice tempo for this. And then Gina points out, imagine breathing through your heart, which I think is a really beautiful idea. I love to imagine that. And then next, set the attention and visualize someone or something that you're truly grateful for. It's transformative. So to connect the dots, you want to practice this. So, you know, for your next presentation, keynote, um, TV appearance, job interview, first date, anything, you know, when you're preparing for it, whatever you're doing, you know, you're thinking about your content and... If you're listening to the podcast, I'm sure you're right there with me. You're thinking about your mindset. So now add gratitude to the mindset work and see what a difference it makes. It's totally made a difference for me. I feel the shift physically, emotionally, and then in the work that I'm doing. It's amazing. You know, once again, I'm so grateful to you for listening to Camera Ready and Able. I hope you found this episode helpful. And if you need help getting to where you want to be from where you are today, please shoot me a note via my website. I read every email I receive. And when you're there, please download my free ebook, 12 Tips for Success on Camera. And as always, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. 